Well, hello there, ladies and gents. How the very devil are you? Andy here on possibly the first proper summery day of 2022 here in northern Germany. So summery, in fact, I've finally broken out the Knox Urbane Pro Mark II jacket as we've reached the required 20 degrees plus to make it comfortable to wear because this thing is cool and it's always nice to see the Handroid pods again. But anyway, enough about that. The reason we are gathered here today is to talk to you about tyres. Finally, I've got to the point where I'm happy to give you a review of my experience with the Avon Spirit STs. So strap yourselves in, get the kettle on, and we'll get on with a little bit of reviewage. Now I fitted the Avon Spirit STs to my Honda CB1000R just under two years ago, as soon as the factory fitted Bridgestone S21s were through. And in the interest of full disclosure, Avon did actually give me the first set of tyres completely for free. And the reason I say the first set is because just yesterday it became time to change the front. And that was the thing that drove me to the point to think, maybe now is the time to finally let you know how I feel about these tyres and how they performed for me over the last two years. And it also does tell you why I'm taking it a little bit gingerly on the bends to begin with. Not pushing that front just until the sheen's been scrubbed off. So yeah, a little less than two years ago I fitted the tyres to the bike and you heard me right, I've just changed the front. And with a hair under 17,000 kilometres, that means if we take away the 5,000 that the Bridgestone S21's lasted for, the front tyre lasted for 12,000 kilometres. But the rear still got easily another five or 6,000 kilometres in it. And so in spoiler alert fashion, it probably says all you really need to know about how I feel about these tyres. Instead of changing both tyres for something new, I've smashed another Avon Spirit ST on the front with my own money to see out the life of the rear one. Because there's so much good meat left on that tyre and I've enjoyed using them so much, it seemed worth it to me. But let's get real, or as they say up here in Northern Germany, Buddha Beide Fischer. It's all very well and good saying that I enjoy them they were good but can I justify it well actually yes I can but before I do that let me tell you a little bit about my tire background my rubber resume if you will so that you know exactly where I'm coming from then I'll let you know a little bit about the tires and what they have to offer before we finally get down to the meat and two veg of the review now, I'm only going to go back five or six years in time don't worry I'm not going to tell you what tires I had on my KH100 in the early 2000s so if we wind the clock back to the beginning of that period I had a Yamaha FZ1N it had a set of Metzler M7RRs when I bought it incredibly sticky tires but they really didn't last very long I think I managed about four or five thousand kilometers out of those I switched them for a set of Michelin Road 5 all of the videos of all of the reviews of those tires you can see up in the top right really enjoyed them incredible tires massively versatile lasted for absolutely ages big big fan after the michelins i bought with my own money a set of metzler zero ones which i boshed onto the fz1 I only managed to get three or four thousand kilometers out of those including a track day i might add with no problems whatsoever before i then sold the bike bought myself the cb1000r as i already mentioned the cb1000r came with bridgestone s21s on it which were i would say probably about as sticky as the metzler m7 rrs were but with that hypersport stickiness came the short life and they also only lasted for about 5,000 kilometers before they were toast. 5,000 thoroughly enjoyable kilometers, but nonetheless, they didn't last a long time. And once they were used up, that's when Avon jumped on board, kindly gave me the Spirit STs, and they're the tires that I've still got on now. So there we go, we're up to date with where I'm from, an even mix of pretty good hypersport tires and sport touring tires. So with the history out of the way, hopefully you will deem me as qualified enough to continue with this endeavor. Oh, go on, please. I'm going to take that as a yes. Thank you very much. I shall continue. The Avon Spirit STs. They are now by no means a new tyre. They were actually released about four years ago. But I'll be completely honest, for me at least, they completely slipped underneath my radar, which I'm a little disappointed about because I feel like I've been missing out. Not to mention the fact that as a Brit living in Germany, it would have been good to have been patriotic from the start with a good set of proper made in Britain tyres. Because that is right. Although Avon is owned by Cooper Tyres, which is an American company, Avon themselves are based in the UK, the tyres are made in the UK. Yeah, that's patriotism at its best. I'm really happy about that to be winging around with a set of boots on my bike with a Union Jack on it. The Queen would be proud. Thank you very much, Mum. But what have these British-made tyres got? What can they do? Well, with tyres, 
the main point of them is to grip the road. I, mean, I probably didn't even really need to tell you that, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? But anyway, they need to grip the road, and they do this through two distinctly separate mechanisms. One of these mechanisms is chemical grip, and the chemical grip is provided by the actual chemical makeup of the rubber, and how it interacts with the road, how it interacts with the road in different conditions, for example, with different temperatures, different moisture levels. And the Spirit STs have rubber compounds that are extremely high in silica, which provides really good grip on the road, especially in the wet. The second mechanism by which the tyres grip the road is mechanical grip. And this is where things like the tread pattern, the profile of the tyre, the depth of the profile, the flexibility of the sidewalls, how the tyre disperses water in order to actually be able to make contact with the road and get that chemical grip into action. And the way that the Spirit STs do this is with a combination of a really aggressive, wet weather looking tread pattern. In fact, if you look at the tread pattern, the back in particular is very reminiscent of a wet race tyre. Really deep grooves and lots of them. But that's not it. As well as this aggressive water dispersing tread pattern, the tyres have also got 3D sipes. But what's different about these 3D sipes is that they've actually got teeth in them. Sounds a bit aggressive, but bear with me, they've actually got teeth in them. And what these teeth actually do, they sit in the wall of the sipe, and when you're riding normally, they're separated, the sipes can work as they're supposed to and eject the water all over the place. As soon as you put pressure onto the sides of the tyre by leaning the bike over, these teeth become meshed together by the flexing of the tyre. And what this then does is it causes that sipe to then effectively be locked out. There's no longer any flex in it, which gives the tyre increased rigidity, increased stability, so you don't get what some of you may have actually experienced. And this brings me to a gap in my resume, actually. I probably should have started at that point, but my Versus 650, way back in the day, when I bought that, it had Michelin Pilot Road 3s on it, and they were absolutely nuts with sipes. They were all over the place. But in my opinion, the trade-off of having so many sipes in the tyre meant that the actual tyre itself felt a little bit unstable. I always felt when I was pushing it in the bends that it got a little bit squirrely, felt like the tyre was flexing around a lot. And the 3D sipes on these Avon Spirit STs are supposed to counter that effect and give you rigid tyres when you need them the most. Speaking of rigidity, the tyres also have a dual belt steel banding system whereby the tyres are banded more tightly around the middle of the carcass to give you rigidity when you're in a straight line, when you're at high speed, and then a little bit more loosely as you get towards the shoulders of the tyre, giving it a little bit more flex so that the tyre can actually seek out the grip as you're pushing into the bends. The Spirit STs are available in a multitude of sizes for pretty much every bike that you could think of. They even, in fact, have a 200 width tyre which means all of you Super Duke R owners out there, if you need some sport touring tyres because you're sick of struggling in the winter with your hypersport tyres, Avon's got you back. Okay, with all the marketing gubbins out of the way though, how have I gotten on with them? I have to say, my experiences really were a baptism of fire. Because I fitted the tyres literally the day before I went on a tour with your friend and mine, the likeable rider, to Touring of Alt. Forecasts looked relatively pleasant. I even rode down to his place in the sunshine. And what followed was possibly one of the wettest weekends of my entire life, and not in a good way. So there I was, hacking around with him on his Super Duke R, on a set of aforementioned hypersport, summer-friendly, winter-hating tyres, uh, with me on my brand newly fitted Avon Spirit STs, not really knowing what I was dealing with, and also with them being brand spanking new, being a little bit nervous about the slipperiness of new tyres. Turns out I had nothing to worry about. They did not miss a single beat. We ended up having three days of sopping wet roads, driving rain, temperatures down to as low as five degrees, and although I was freezing cold and barely functioning at all, the tyres were absolutely on song. They were nothing short of brilliant. Despite the shocking weather, despite the low temperatures, I didn't have any real moments of worry about grip. I was expecting to see the traction control light flashing like a Christmas tree throughout the whole weekend, but didn't see it at all. As I think that's maybe not quite true, but there was one slippery patch where I'm pretty sure there was an oil slick on the road because the rest of the time they were bomb proof. So then with that trip out of the way, me feeling really smug about my rubber choice, the likeable rider hating the crap out of his, not to mention the MCU failure, which made for a very interesting ride home, but that's another story. You'll have to watch that little tour series to find out about it. But yeah, that was pretty much the last proper tour of that season. The weather took a horrible downturn. Everything got shitty like it does every year here in Northern Germany. But due to my newfound confidence in my incredible new tyres, I wasn't shaken. 
and throughout the winter I proceeded to put together a little series of videos that I called the One Day Winter Wanderings. But yeah, I went on a bunch of trips. I went down to the heart on a day trip where the temperature didn't get above five degrees at all. At points it even got down as low as two. And because of this, and because of the low sun, and because of the incredible moisture in the air, the roads were slippery and greasy for the whole day long. Yet the tires didn't skip a beat. I also took another trip up to the northernmost point of Germany. Whether it is actually the northernmost point is a matter of debate, but once again, go and check out the video and you can decide for yourself. But the riding on that day started off relatively dry before you know it it was torrential rain for all of the rest of the day thankfully that was at the same point that I started delving into the world of laminate bike gear as well and amazingly a whole new world of biking was opened up to me because for a start I had laminated bike gear so I stayed warm and dry all day long but ultimately and most importantly thanks to the Avon Spirit STs I had unshakable confidence through all of the downpour sodden corners and twisties and ended up having an absolutely fantastic time despite it shitting it down with rain for the entire day. Again, if you don't believe me, go and check out the video. There were a multitude of people in the comments section of that video drawing attention to and mentioning the fact that I was giving it so much beans despite the horrendous weather. So then with the one day winter wanderings out of the way, the temperature finally started to raise a little bit and better equipped with proper winter gear. Me and the likeable rider tried again, didn't go to Turing about this time but went to the Visa Bergland for a little bit of a much anticipated blast around in the springtime sunshine. Of course, Northern European weather had very different ideas and one of those episodes was quite fittingly named Storm Chasing with the Likeable Rider because it turned into a bit of a race between glorious sunshine like this and driving thunderstorms. It was ridiculous. But once again, the Spirit STs really did show their mettle as we were nipping between warm dry roads and freezing cold wet roads sometimes with alarming frequency and once again didn't skip a beat felt confident pushed on in the corners both in the dry and in the wet and once again thanks to having proper laminated gear and great tires ended up having a fantastic time it really did start to change my opinion of riding in the bad weather it's just like if you've got the right gear the weather can do one and you get the added bonus that the roads are empty because nobody likes riding in the wet yeah, but then with all of this out of the way winter riding awful weather driving rain, low temperatures, I was starting to think there's no way these tyres can be this good in what is essentially winter riding and still have anything to offer when it gets really hot. We all know that some tyres, when you start to push on and the road is really, really warm, they start to get a little bit slippery, a little bit greasy. And the real test for the Spirit STs in that arena came when the quarantine restrictions were dropped in Austria. So I immediately jumped on the train, took my bike down to the Alps, and blasted around there for five days. And the weather took a form that I had never fully expected. I've been to the Alps several times now and the weather is always extremely changeable, bordering between warm and disgustingly wet. And I had the most incredible, perfect weather you could possibly imagine. It was the alpine trip of the gods. It really was from the heavens. And as such, I got to test out the tires in even more extremely fluctuating circumstances than before, because down at what I'm gonna call ground level in the towns, in the villages, the temperature was climbing above 30 degrees almost every single day. Glorious sunshine, no wind, and you guessed it, the tires had no trouble at all. I had no issues with greasiness, no issues with slippery, soft, slimy tires because of the heat. They just held on and did a fantastic job. But furthermore, when you climb up into the Alps, the temperature plummets through the cellar quicker than you can imagine. I mean, I was going from Knox Urban Pro Mark II down on the ground level and then having to put on the laminate jacket by the time I got to the top of the mountain. So the spirits were dealing with super hot, sticky tar at the bottom and then freezing cold, glacial water running across the roads up in the altitudes and again just no issues i mean there were a few moments where i was cranked over going around a bend and then there was a stream of glacial water pouring across the road and i had a little bit of a shimmy but nothing that raised my heart rate nothing that really unsettled the bike that much it just grabbed its grip again carried on my way and all in all that was five days of touring around the Austrian Alps with a bit of Italy a little bit of Switzerland and tires were just unfaultable they were fantastic So with the knowledge firmly stashed under my belt that these tyres can deal with cold weather, hot weather, wet weather, changeable weather, I would go as far as to say they are equally as good 
as the Michelin Road 5s that went before them. And I would even go a bit further to say that perhaps they take the place of my favourite tyres because made in bloody Britain, innit? But of course, they can't be perfect. They can't be 100% the greatest tyre in the world. Or can they? Well, it's very, very close indeed. And the only reason I say that is because I think there was just one tiny thing, one minuscule little area in which the Road 5s actually had the Avon Spirit STs pegged. And that was just how quickly they warmed up. Once I'd stopped for a cup of tea, once I'd stopped to change camera batteries, when I got started again, the Avons just took that tiny little bit longer to feel like they were up to temperature and they were gripping hard. I mean, just to put this into context, I'm talking a tiny amount of time, like a couple of minutes, and then everything felt exactly the same again. But there were a few times where I just pushed a little bit too hard, a little bit too early, and the Avons gave me a tiny bit of a shimmy just to remind me that they weren't quite ready yet. They needed to have a bit more of a stretch and a limber up. Whereas with the Michelin Road 5s, I did feel that they were on temperature just that bit quicker. Otherwise, say again, I can't see at my level because I should justify all of this by saying I am not a professional rider. I've only ever been on track twice in my life. I like to push on, but I'm not exactly the fastest guy on two wheels. So with all that said, at my skill level, I cannot find any difference between these Spirit STs and the Road 5s from Michelin. Obviously, your mileage may vary. Your bike might be different to mine, your bike might be heavier, you might be lighter, your style might be different. Unfortunately, with a lot of these things, to really find out if it fits you, you need to try it out yourself. And for me, they definitely, definitely fit. Now, of course, the one big elephant in the room, the thing we haven't talked about, is the cost of the tires. If they are 95% as good as a set of Michelin Road 5s, and that 5% just counts for this heating up thing, are they cheaper in order to cancel that out? Well, this is a difficult one because when I first got the tires just under two years ago, in most dealerships, they were running out for around about 20 to 25% cheaper than a set of Road 5s, which is fantastic. For me, at that price, they were an utter no-brainer. But I was having a little bit of a look online today and unfortunately it seems like either their reputation has got the better of them or the supply and demand situation has changed things, but one way or another, the price difference is no longer so great. For a rear tire to fit on this bike, the difference between the Michelin Road 5 and the Spirit ST was actually about 5 to 10 euros. Although the area where that difference becomes much bigger is when you compare the Spirit STs against the Michelin Road 6s. Because they're going out for about 175 a tyre, which means we're back up to around about that 15 to 20% price difference. The only thing is, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to have a go on the Road 6s yet, so I can't tell you how much better they are on the Road 5s, if they are better at all. Maybe that's something I can remedy with a bit of a contact to Michelin, but sadly, they don't seem to return my calls anymore, so to wait and see. But yeah, with regard to the cost, standard prices, the difference is no longer so great. These dealerships do crazy special offers all the time. The brands themselves do crazy special offers all the time, so it's worth having a shop around. And I just really do think, if you're not considering them, if they're not on your radar, do take a look at the Avon Spirit STs because they have convinced me 100% and I'm really happy with how they've performed on my bike and how they've made my riding incredibly enjoyable over the last two years. And with that in mind, I will say thank you so very much Avon for giving me these tyres and opening my eyes to just how good your rubber really is. there we go, that pretty much sums up my experiences and my feelings around the Avon Spirit STs. I have been utterly convinced that they are a great set of hoops. I would happily recommend them to anybody who's into sports touring, wants to push on in the twisties, but also wants to be able to have confidence and stability and oodles of grip in the wet, but all for a pretty competitive price. They've been a splendid set of boots to me, and I will happily give them Andy Mancam's stamp of approval. And to Avon I say, once again, thanks very much. Very, very well done. And what's next? And when what's next comes along, can I please try them out? Because these things have been brilliant. Thank you so, so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been useful to you, please do the right thing and give it a like. If you've hated it, dislike the crap out of it. Either way, give me a comment below if you've got any questions or queries and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Otherwise, keep your shiny and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra!